graphs of the sine and cosine functions. We're going to look at the graph y equals a the sine of omega x and y equals a the cosine of omega x. Now this is what my book shows. Your book might have different letters or symbols, but they're going to work exactly the same way. Let's review the sine function for a minute. Of course, I put up our xy table and our picture here. Now, when we start graphing the sine function, we're going to have five points that we're going to graph every time. We're going to graph the beginning, the maximum, and the where it crosses the x-axis. And it crosses, actually, one, two, three times, and then the minimum. So these are our five major points that we're going to graph. So here's our sine function, and let's just review that the domain is negative infinity to positive infinity, and our range for just this basic one, y equals the sine of x, is negative 1 to 1, and it includes those. The sine has a period, or is periodic, of 2 pi. The x-intercepts are every pi, and the sine function is an odd function. It is symmetric with respect to the origin. Let's graph on the calculator really quick here, and we're just going to graph the basic sine function. So the first thing we really need to make sure is that our mode is in radians, and here's radians. I know it's in radians because it's highlighted. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to graph as usual. I'm going to go into y equals. I'm graphing the sine of x. And now to graph it, instead of going to z standard like we've been doing, we're going to go into z trig. And when we look at the sine function, it looks just like our picture. Here's 0, 0, and here's um, pi right here, and 2 pi. It goes up to 1 and down to negative 1. So let's look at the sine equation really quick. A is our amplitude, and that's the highest point on the graph. We use the absolute value because, remember, a height can't be negative. If we had a negative A, that actually tells us that instead of the sine going up and down, it's going to go down and up, and we're going to practice that in a minute. Omega is the frequency, and that's the number of complete cycles within 2 pi. And we have a great little formula here. That, so the period would be 2 pi divided by omega. So for instance, let's say omega is 4. That means we're going to have four complete cycles within 2 pi. And I'm going to show you how that works in this example coming up next. So here's our example. The first thing that I always like to do is write the amplitude. It's, it's the easiest part. It's 3. Let's put that on our graph right away. So the max will be 3, and the minimum will be negative 3. Next is our omega, and our omega is 4. Now let's figure out the period using omega. What we're going to do is we're going to put 4 in for omega. And when we simplify it, we get pi over 2. And this is so easy to graph. Here's pi over 2. Remember, that's my period. That means between 0, 0, and here, the entire picture has to be here. So let me graph our picture. Now let's do those five major points. Here's 0, 0. And up here, let's do right in here first. Between 0, 0 and pi over 2 is pi over 4. Now hopefully you have your fractions down um, pretty good because we're going to be using them a lot for this. So pi over 4 is 0. Now between 0 and pi over 4 is pi over 8. So this point will be pi over 8, 3. This is our maximum here. This is pi over 8, 2 pi over 8. This one will be, yeah, 3 pi over 8. And it'll be negative 3 for the y. And then finally, our last point here is pi over 2, 0. And you've just graphed this equation. It doesn't get any easier than that. I want you to try this one. OK, press pause, get a solution, and play to see if we match up. Well, let's look at this equation. Of course, our amplitude is 2, and that's the easiest thing, I think. So I like to do that right away. Here's my 2, and then my negative 2. Now, omega is 1 half. When we put it into our period equation, it turns out that one period will go out to 4 pi. So that's what's going here. So some of you might have something that looks like this. 
Well, not quite. The reason is, is that we have this negative here. Let me see if I have room. Remember, if we had negative ax squared plus bx plus c, we would graph it like this instead of this. Okay? The same thing is true for this guy. We're going to be graphing it the other way. So let me put it in here. And try your best. Okay, that's not super great, but it's not so bad either. Okay, now just like the last, we're going to plot this point first. Well, of course, we know this is 0, 0. Halfway between 0, 0 and pi over 4 is 2 pi. So this point will be 2 pi 0. Halfway between 0 and pi over 2 is pi. So this one will be pi negative 2. Halfway between 2 pi and 4 pi is 3 pi and 2. And of course I'll put 0, 0 in here. And those are our five main points. Oh, oops! One more main point here, 4 pi and 0. Okay, so here are our five main points and you just graph this equation. Just like the sine function, we're going to have five main points. This one, this one, here we go. So you'll notice the cosine actually starts at 0, 1, goes down and up. Here's our cosine written out very nicely. The domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range again is from negative 1 to 1. The sine again has a period... Whoops! The cosine has a period of 2 pi, just, as, just the same as the sine. The x-intercepts are at every pi over 2. And the cosine function the cosine function is an even function. It is symmetric with respect to the y-axis. So let's look at this function. Once again, a is the amplitude. That tells us the highest point on the graph. Omega is the frequency. That's the number of complete cycles within 2 pi. And just like the sine, to figure out the period, we would do 2 pi over omega. So let's graph a cosine function. So I have y equals 3 to the cosine of 2x. 3 is our amplitude, so let's put that in right away. And 2 is our omega. So when we put 2 in for omega, it turns out that our period is pi. Okay, so it turns out that our period is pi. Okay. Now we're still going to need to figure out what's halfway between 0, 0 and pi. Well, that would be pi over 2. Halfway between 0 and pi over 2 is pi over 4. 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4 gives us 3 pi over 4. Okay, so let's draw our graph. So let's mark these points. This is going to be 0, 3. This point we can see is pi over 4, 0. This point down here is going to be pi over 2, negative 3. This point is going to be 3 pi over 4, 0. And finally, this guy right up here. It's going to be pi 3. And these are our five main points that we just graphed. And so we just graphed this equation. I'd like you to graph this one on your own. So press pause, practice, and then play to see if you're correct. 
So let's look at this graph. Our amplitude is 4, our omega is pi, so it turns out that our period is 2, and that's no problem. So let's put our amplitude in first, so here's 4 and negative 4. Our period is 2, so we're going to put that out here. Well, halfway between 0 and 2 is 1. We have a half here, so 1 half, 2 half, 3 halves, 3 over 2, I almost put 3 pi over 2. And let's draw our picture. Remember to put your arrows at the end because it does go to negative and positive infinity. So let's mark our five important points. And that's all there is to these. Of course, there's more to the equations than we've been looking at. So what we're going to do is I'm going to add b to this. And basically, b is the vertical shift. So let me show you how this works. So let's look at this equation. So we have our amplitude and our omega, and we figured out our period. But we have this guy on the end, and that's 2. The first thing that I like to do, and you don't necessarily have to do this, but I like to graph it without the 2 there. Okay, so we're going to forget about this guy for a couple of minutes. So what I have is the graph of 3 cosine of x. Okay, now when I add 2, let me show you what's going to happen. So now let's add the 2. And the 2, remember, is our vertical shift. It's our up or down. And we're going up 2. So basically, all we're going to do is we're going to add 2. If I can get this in here. Add 2 to our y values. Okay. So let me show you how that's going to work in the next picture. So let's graph this with the vertical shift. Here's our xy table from the last screen. Remember, this is for y equals 3 cosine of x. What we're going to do, this tells us we're going to add 2 to all of our y values. So instead of 3, we're going to have 5. Instead of 0, we're going to have 2. Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. 2, and then back to 5. Now I like to re oops, I like to rewrite these. The reason is is that if I don't put these in here and I look over, I'm just going to end up graphing um, y equals 3 to the cosine of x, but it's really up to you. So we have 0, 5. Here's 5. We know we're going out to 2 pi because that's our period. And here's pi. So we have pi over 2, and we're going up to 2. At pi, we're at negative 1. At 3 pi over 2, we are up to 2, and then at 2 pi, we're at 5. And this is where graph paper really comes in handy. But let me try to graph it here. And there's the graph of 3 cosine of x plus 2. Basically, all we did was we moved it up 2. So let me show you how I learned how to do this. You could do it if you want. You don't have to. But once again, here we are, same equation. What this 2 says is that everything's moving up 2. So what I was taught is that instead of the center being at 0, 0, the center is now at 2. So if I have my amplitude of 3, I'm going to count from here, because this is my new center. So 1, 2, 3, and that ends up at 5. My period isn't going to change just because I'm going up or down. So let me put all of these in here. I know that from my original, it's going to go through this point at 0. But since we're moving up to, this is my new, it's kind of, it's kind of like this is my new x-axis. And then this one will come down to negative 1 then back up here and up here. So instead of the picture being through the x-axis, it's now through x equals 2, and you'll see that we get the exact same picture. So hopefully you get what I'm saying. You don't have to do it like this. Some of you were taught this way. It's in just another way to do it. But I think for my students, for my students, I'd prefer that you did it like this. So now it's your turn to try it. I want you to graph 5 minus 3, the sine of 2x. 
a little bit tricky but not so bad. Press pause, solve it, and then play to see the solutions. Our amplitude is 3, and that comes right from this guy. The only difference between this and the last one we looked at is instead of the 5 being at the end, plus 5, it's actually at the beginning, and you'll see it either way. Okay, so here's the solution. So what I did, um, if you're going to do the xy table, for the original one, 3 sine of 2x, we know that it would be 0, 0. And then remember it goes down, so um, our amplitude is 3. Since it's negative, we know it's going to be going down like this instead of up like that. Pi over 4, sorry about that, pi over 4, negative 3. Pi over 2, 0. And then we're going to have 3 pi over 4 is going to be up at positive 3. And then since our period is pi, pi will be at 0. So what this is telling us is we're going to add 5, okay? So we're going to add 5 to all of these, and that's what I did. So we have 0, 5, negative 3 plus 5 is positive 2. 0 plus 5 is 5. I have this one, which is 3 pi over 4, and that's going to be 8. The reason it's 8 is because I'm adding 5 here, and then pi 5. If you were doing it the other way, you would have graphed this as usual and then just moved everything up five spots. Okay, so hopefully you have the same answer. Thanks for watching.